All right, welcome back, uh, pre-calculus folks. This will be the first video for section 8.2. In this section, we're going to introduce the graphs of other trigonometric functions um, besides sine and cosine uh, and tangent. I introduced the tangent function um, in, in, a, in a previous video, but I think I'm gonna mention it again in this one just to re reiterate. So uh, first of all, you can see here, I've got the graph of cosine. What I wanna do is I wanna look at the graph of one over cosine of x, the reciprocal of that, which, by the way, is secant. Okay, so remember that the secant function is the same as the reciprocal of the cosine function. So here is the graph of that thing. It's this. And you, I've graphed this one over cosine, and I've graphed secant, and you can see that they are uh, the same. All right? So let's compare the graph of cosine and the graph of secant. Remember that they're reciprocals of one another. Well, the cosine function equals 1 uh, when x equals 0, right? So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1, right? So we see that the graphs are touching each other at that point right there. Right? They have the same y-coordinate. Likewise, uh, the, re the reciprocal of negative 1 is also equal to negative 1. So down here at the, at the valleys, uh, the local minimums, um, those are also graphs are touching each other. So we've got cosine and, and the secant, the green one here. Um, let's make them slightly more different from one another. Red and green is not the best choice. Let's do red and purple. That might be better. Red and purple. So um, otherwise, there's a big, big difference between these, which is that um, where cosine is bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and 1, the secant reciprocal function is actually diverging away, giving us numbers that are bigger than 1 or, or less than negative 1. Basically, it's taking the range and turning it inside out. Instead of, instead of the negative one to one range that the cosine function has, the secant function has a range coming from negative infinity all the way up to negative one, and then it skips this band. If I remove the, the cosine function, you can see it skips the negative one to one segment and then starts from one and goes up, up to positive infinity. So it's, it's, it's like, I like to think of it as taking negative one to one and turning that interval inside out to give us uh, the sort of uh, inverse of that. Uh, inverse is not the right, I don't wanna use the word inverse, I wanna use the word um, complement. That's actually the correct word to use there. It's the complement of the, of the range of cosine. So anyway, I um, wanted to point that out. Uh, it also has all of these vertical asymptotes. It's kind of hard to see, but there are vertical asymptotes all over the place. Like if you take y equals pi over 2. No, no, not y. Sorry, vertical asymptote. x equals pi over 2. That's a vertical asymptote. And the reason for that there is because if cosine is in the denominator, then whenever cosine equals 0, we should have it be undefined, right? Because you can't divide by that 0. So where does cosine equal 0? Cosine equals 0. Uh, when the x-coordinate is zero, which would be points on the y-axis, so therefore points like, you know, like this one up here or this one down here, uh, those would be points where cosine is zero. Pi over two and three pi over two, and any other, you know, three pi over two as well, and any other odd multiple of pi over two, including negative ones like negative pi over two, negative three pi over two, etc. Okay, so that's where all, all those vertical asymptotes are. Those vertical asymptotes are the same as the tangent function, by the way, because tangent function also has cosine in the denominator. So now if that's the secant, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's cosecant? Well, if we change this to uh, cosecant, CSC, that should be the reciprocal of the sine function. So there's the reciprocal of the sine function, and if we graph the sine function, as well, we can see the exact same relationship between them. So there's sine and cosecant, right? It's exactly the same picture we were just looking at, except everything's shifted over pi over two units. Okay, and you can see our vertical asymptotes are now in a different place. There are places like zero uh, and pi and two pi and three pi and so on. So those are all multiples of pi because sine of x being in the denominator this time, sine of x would be zero at these points, points like 1, 0, and uh, negative 1, 0, so multiples of pi, all right? So there's the graphs of, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, to, to, to kind of just erase, remove everything else, there's the graph of cosecant, and there's the graph of secant, 
very similar graphs, but shifted apart from one another and in exactly the same sort of way that sine and cosine are shifted apart from one another. So let's get rid of all of those now and uh, take a look at uh, tangent. So tangent. So there's the tangent graph. I explained this before. Remember that we're talking about um, these slopes here. So as we go from zero up to pi over two, the slopes are going to approach infinity. And that is this behavior right here, where it's going starting from zero and going up to infinity. So this little segment right here, this is the first quadrant of the unit circle. And then here's quadrant two, and then here would be quadrant three, and then here would be quadrant four, okay, bringing us to two pi right there. So quadrant one, two, three, four, right? And that's got uh, all these vertical asymptotes whenever we're reaching a multiple of pi over two or you know three pi over two. So um, if that's tangent, then the cotangent graph should look very similar to this, except reciprocated. If we graph cotangent, it looks like that. So cotangent is a lot like tangent. They meet each other. They're exactly uh, they exactly the same value only when the y coordinate equals one because the reciprocal of one equals one. Oh, actually also when the y-coordinate is negative one, right? And that occurs at places like pi over four and three pi over four, okay? As well as five pi over four and other, other kind of quarters of pi, um, odd quarters of pi. So uh, otherwise we have the same sort of reciprocating, like when, when, um, when tangent is zero, cotangent is having a vertical asymptote. And when tangent is having its vertical asymptote, that's when cotangent is zero. So in a way, we're seeing something uh, that you'll you'll learn about more in calculus class, which is in a way like zero and infinity are kind of reciprocals of one another. And in, when you compare these two graphs, they're acting kind of like reciprocals of one another. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to introduce these graphs to you. Again, there's the uh, there's the tangent graph by itself, um, and there's the cotangent graph by itself. I just wanted to introduce these to you so you had them in your visual memory. Um, we won't be doing a ton of work with these with these graphs, um, but it is good to at least be aware of them, uh, especially especially in calculus when you need to um, do some graphical reasoning with these functions.